So I think season two of Diablo 4 has been a pretty big win for the game, but one of the new content additions with this new season, I think is one of the best pieces of content in Diablo 4 as a whole. And this is Blood Harvest, which is a new open world event in a similar vein to Helltides, except it's significantly better in almost every way. And if you haven't farmed in Blood Harvest, you're missing out, but I want to go over a quick explanation as to how these are actually different to something like Hell tides and why these blood harvests are actually so good. So first off, and one of the biggest things is you can do blood harvest at level one in any world tier. You start a level one character, you can go there and start farming. And tying into that, there's always a blood harvest up. So it lasts for one hour and when it ends, a new one spawns in a different zone. So there's always one up. Unlike something like hell tides that is only up every other hour. And depending on what you're doing, it may feel like you're not seeing one for hours at a time. And Blood Harvest specific resources are also the opposite of Helltides. In Blood Harvest you'll be farming both Blood Lures and Seeker Keys, but these resources do not go away when the Blood Harvest goes away. So you always keep these resources and you don't lose any when you die. So when looking at both these open world events from a top down view, they look pretty similar. But once you get into a lot of the specifics, they're very different. And I think a lot of these differences is why Blood Harvest just plays so well. Now looking past the top-down information, there's a few pieces of Blood Harvest that just make it so incredibly enjoyable to go and farm. First, and one of the biggest things being the mob density. The mob density is crazy. There's almost always a big pack of enemies on your screen. And not only is there almost always a big pack of enemies on your screen, but these packs of enemies are bigger and new packs are always constantly spawning in. And I'm not talking about just how quickly those specific packs of enemies respawn. I'm also talking about new New packs of enemies just always randomly spawning in. If you go and attack a big group of enemies, randomly another group will spawn directly on top of you that has a bunch of elites. So even getting into combat with some of these packs actually causes another pack to spawn on top of you. Then clicking on any chest or gathering any resources has a pretty high chance to also spawn a pack of enemies on top of you. A lot of the time this will also spawn a group of elites. So just the base mob density of every blood harvest is ridiculous and that's incredibly fun, especially since a bunch of this is made up of kind of base fodder enemies. So you have a few stronger, more dangerous enemies, but then you just have dozens of these fodder enemies that just makes farming here and destroying big groups of enemies so fun. But then on top of that, you can also come across blood seekers, which are a much stronger version of elites. They're kind of like mini bosses and you can just randomly run across these or even summon them using some of the resources, but killing enemies in a blood harvest will also cause vampires vampires to start to hunt you. So if you've been killing too many vampires randomly, blood seekers will just pop out of nowhere, spawn on top of you and start trying to kill you. So there's also some amount of randomness where these kind of mini bosses will hunt you down. And nothing like that really happens in Helltides. You have the meteors that will come down and randomly like an elite will spawn next to you, but those aren't nearly as dangerous. In fact, the meteors are the actual dangerous part and half the time an elite doesn't even spawn next to you. But in the blood harvest, if you're being hunted, seekers will all always come to you. If you're with a group of players and you've all been killing enemies and blood seekers are hunting all of you, every player will have their own pack of blood seekers spawn in. Sometimes when you're doing some of the events in the area, there'll be a bunch of people and like six blood seekers will just spawn in because they're hunting everybody, which just adds a lot more variation and much more exciting random elements into the zone. Because blood seekers also drop a lot of loot. When you're in World Tier 3 and 4, they commonly drop legendaries and they drop a bunch of other resources. Now, when you're running around mowing down packs of hundreds of enemies, you'll also be coming across seeker keys, which are one of the resources for the zone. And these seeker keys open up randomly spawning chests throughout the zone. So it's in some way a little bit similar to Helltide chests, except these chests in Blood Harvest are from a resource that you don't lose. You only need one of them per chest. So it's generally much easier to get these. And these chests are much more plentiful throughout the zone. And it's just one key to one chest. And these chests are are absolutely ridiculous for gearing up any character in any world tier. If you start a level one character and go to a blood harvest, get a key, open a chest, that'll give you rare items, even at like level two or level three. So it's ridiculous for new characters. And if you're getting a character into world tier three, world tier four, the keys stay with you through world tiers and through characters. So you get early on getting a world tier four, go open up a bunch of chests, get guaranteed ancestral rare items and gear up super quickly. 
So Blood Harvest are just also incredibly strong for just general gearing. But that's not the only Blood Harvest specific resource that's incredibly valuable to use in Blood Harvest because you also have Blood Lure, which is basically the cinder equivalent to Blood Harvest. But again, you don't lose them. You don't lose them for dying and you don't lose them when Blood Harvest end. But with Blood Lures, if you gather up 150, you can go to basically the center of the Blood Harvest and there's three pillars. They cost 50 lures each. When you use all three lures, it spawns a mini wave event where you have to kill bunches of enemies. It starts spawning elite start spawning some blood seekers and then once you've killed enough enemies it spawns in three actual bosses which are basically just juiced up blood seekers and these bosses drop guaranteed legendaries no matter what level you are no matter what world tier you in and they actually give you a good amount of experience and since this is a zone specific thing an open world zone specific thing any other player can come across and put 50 in to activate one of the pillars so if you have three people you could all put 50 blood lures in and now you all get to kill all these enemies kill the bosses all get a crazy amount of loot but then on top of that if you do this kill the boss the pillars respawn instantly you can instantly put in more blood lures and instantly start this event again so it's infinitely farmable in a zone that's always up and comparing that to Helltides again, there is nothing like that in Helltides. You can't go use cinders to spawn these massive bosses that'll give you just a ton of loot. The only thing you're doing in Helltides is killing as many enemies as you can possibly find to get cinders to open up the chest as quickly as possible. There's nothing else to go use them on. But in Blood Harvest, the equivalent resource, you can spawn these bosses. You can also go use Blood Lures to go to some pedestals to also just spawn in Blood Seekers if you want to use it on that as well. So you have so many more options options and so many more ways to use these resources to go get loot. And then one of the final things that makes Blood Harvest so incredibly good is that there are also Blood Harvest specific whispers that if you do the three Blood Harvest specific whispers, you will always get a whisper turn in. So you'll always get at least 10 points. I think it's usually 10 to 12 points. And in season two and for the future of Diablo 4, whispers are ridiculously strong for experience. They give pretty decent loot now and that is how you actually actually farm gold. Doing like one whisper turn in in World Tier 4 will give you like upwards of 8 million gold sometimes and these whispers reset every hour when the blood harvest moves so if you're just trying to farm whispers every hour you're going to have a bunch more to go do but the blood harvest whispers aren't even the only ones within the blood harvest because it also keeps the normal whispers that would be in that zone so if you do every whisper objective in that blood harvest zone you will usually be able to get two whisper turn ins or right around to whisper turnins while being in this zone that you're farming tons of other loot tons of other resources and it has ridiculously high mob density so it always feels like there's something lucrative to be doing in the blood harvest comparing that to hell tides you go to hell tides it feels like there's nothing actually worth doing besides trying to get as many cinders as humanly possible it doesn't feel like there's any other objectives that are worth going to do there's no bosses you can go summon or basically anything else but blood harvest just have all of these different small elements tied into it that makes it feel like there's always something going on. There's always some small objective to stop to do. There's always some boss to go summon. There's always a whisper to be completed. So it feels like you're always making pretty good progression no matter what you're doing in a blood harvest. So I very much think Blood Harvest should be a permanent addition to the game. It should not be leaving when Season 2 leaves. It should be added to the Eternal Realm. Blood Harvests are incredible. And with Diablo 4's map being so massive and pretty heavily underutilized into the endgame, having another zone constantly rotating around the map gives people a reason to constantly be out in the open world farming. Because Blood Harvests are so good that people actually want to go farm there instead of just farming Nightmare Dungeons. Because the amount of loot you get there is actually good enough to be competitive with the other systems in the game. And when you make something very lucrative and the actual gameplay and farming of it fun, it's just a win. I haven't heard any bad things about Blood Harvest yet. But that does bring me to Helltides, which is what we've been comparing these Blood Harvest to the whole time. And I do think Helltides need a bit of an overhaul, but I don't think it needs to be exactly like Blood Harvest like a lot of people are mentioning. I do think that the gameplay of having resources 
the go away and an event that isn't always up isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I think there's generally two good ways to go about fixing Helltides. Either massively increase the mob density, increase the amount of cinders you get, and allow people to just go there when it's active and just slam and go crazy farming up ludicrous amounts of cinders to be able to basically open up everything they want so you can go there for an hour and just farm up tons of resources so you don't feel like you always have to be going to Helltide. Now I would say they should also be increasing the amount of living steel you get in Helltides, which is the resource you need to go kill Gregor, which is only from Helltides, which you also have to kill Gregor to kill Duriel, so it's very important you get living steel, and you only get three per chest, and there's only about four chests you can get in a singular Helltide, and it takes most of that hour to farm enough to get those chests. I think those chests should at minimum give you five living steel, so one chest equals one boss kill, and I think that's probably the easiest way to go about fixing Helltides while keeping the original design philosophy where you lose all the cinders when the event ends. If you die, you lose half of your cinders. Just make it harder with a lot more enemies with more cinders drops. So having a really good build that can just blast harder and harder is going to be best for Helltides. Now, the other way you can go about fixing this is basically just make it Blood Harvest, make it so there's always one up, make it so you don't lose cinders. But with that, you would probably have to massively reduce the amount of cinders you can get because even when looking at Blood Lures in Blood Harvest, you get a lot less of them than you do cinders. So if there was always one up, you would have to drop it or people would just farm for a couple hours and basically be done with Helltides for a season, which doesn't really make sense either. But with all that being said, I think Blood Harvest should definitely stay in the game. And I think this is a blueprint they should follow for all future open world events. And I do think that's something that can work very well in the future of Diablo 4, having these crazy big open world events that are just packed to the wall with enemies and random little objectives, events, and bosses scattered all throughout it so it just feels like you're always just blasting and doing new objectives and getting more resources. But that's all I want to go over, so thanks for watching.